kind of things in, in quizzes. Then there'll be a final exam that will worth worth 15 points. So there's three quizzes, each are worth five points. There's 14 weekly assignments, each are worth five points. And then lastly, there is a final that's worth 15 points. Basic 90, uh, 90s or A's, 80s or B's, and so on. Um, it is possible that a weekly assignment, I might merge two weekly assignments together, you know, and in, in which case if I do that, then you'll just get double points for it. So I made, I reserve the right to do that. I reserve the right to, to change anything about this, all right? You could come in Wednesday and instead this is a, a Latin class, all right? No, okay, we won't, I won't go that far, all right? But I reserve the right to change just about anything uh, on the syllabus. But I will notify you. So, for example, if I decide, hey, the quizzes aren't really a good idea, you know, I'll figure out a way and I'll adjust the points. Likewise, the schedule here is, is a tentative schedule. You know, I'll take my, this is what me scanning the material says is probably the best way to cover it. But, given that this is the first time I've taught this class, you know, we'll find out, right, if, if, if this is a good schedule or not. So, um, if we have to make schedule adjustments, we'll do it. Um, the homework is, will be due Monday of the week, uh, except for next week, of course. We have Labor Day off, so it won't be due next Monday, but it will be due Wednesday instead. Um, and the quizzes will be Wednesday of the week. So, for example, this homework two assignment will be due the Monday of week three. Homework one should be due Monday of week two, but since we have it off, it will be due Wednesday of week two. In this case, homework three will be due Monday of week four, and the quiz will be on Wednesday of week four. Can you uh, repeat that? So I don't think I can. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, so homeworks are due on Monday. Quizzes are due on uh, are taken on Wednesday. So the only thing that's different is the homework one is due on the Wednesday. The only thing that's different is with Labor Day. Um, with Labor Day, since we don't have class Monday, we'll make that one due next Wednesday. Okay. So it, 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 the, the homework and the quiz are self-contained within the same week. I know that sounds weird, but I have a language course, so if, like I'm on week three. We've got to get that homework in by Monday of week four. You're saying here... This is the, the homework for week three is within week three, not no. not the Monday of week four. No, I, I, I'm, I'm saying the opposite. I'm, I'm saying uh, I'm saying that. Okay. For example, this is week one. Week one, we're going to do week one things. Okay. Right. Your first assignment, homework one, is due during week two. That homework is about the stuff that we discussed in week two. The second homework assignment will be given during week two. And it will cover the stuff that we have covered in weeks one and two, and it will be due week three. Oh, okay. So, it's, right. so it's, yeah, same idea. Okay, so it is kind of like the language right. courses. Okay. All right. Any questions about this? Do read through this on your own and, and, and pick out some of the details that maybe I, I glossed over. Um, all right. Let's start talking about the wonderful world of mobile de devices. Let me pull out some of my mobile devices, one of which my lecture's on, one of which I'm going to use as a prop. something, I'm not really sure what, but 
I'm not even sure even what I'm doing on it, but people are on it. What, what percentage of web traffic do you think happens on mobile devices as opposed to desktops and laptops? I, I heard around 10, but that's going to be really hard to measure, all right? And it's definitely something that's increasing. What, what is confusing about that is I'm not sure if they're just talking about mobile web pages or mobile apps as well. So if you put apps in there, I would feel like 10% probably gets up to, to 20% or more. All right. Um, the bottom line is it, it's something that, that, that is currently uh, big and it, it's certain to get bigger. People have called this the post-PC age and, and that kind of thing. All right. So if I wanted to get information about my organization out, to people with mobile devices, all right? What are some alternatives? There's two main alternatives that I could take for getting my information out to people with mobile devices. Apps. An app? And what's the other one? Mobile website. Mobile website. Let me show you the difference, and then we'll talk about more specifically what the difference is, and we will talk about the advantages and disadvantages. Keep in mind, anytime there's more than one alternative to do something, there better be some advantages and disadvantages of both, right? Otherwise, there's no longer two ways to do something. There's one way to do something, and the other way is going to die out really quickly, all right? I'm going to go to, on my phone, I'm going to go to a application for, a, the, the, the site is called Goodreads. All right, it's a site where you can go in and you can post reviews to books. It's like a social media site for, for book readers, where you can have your friends and you can post reviews, you can see what other people are reading to get suggestions for that. All right, and here it is, this is a mobile app for Goodreads. So I could go and I could click on books that I've read, book I want to read, let's say, and I click on it, and I've got four stars from people, there's no comments, it's on my to read shelf, I could, when I read it I could rate it and put a review on it. Now, I can also get to Goodreads on my mobile phone by opening up my browser and typing in the URL. And that will open up my browser. similar sort of thing. All right. What's the difference between these two solutions? What's the difference between, what are some differences between an app versus a mobile website? Yes. The app is always on your device. Okay. The app lives on your device. What about mobile website? Mobile website doesn't live on your device. In other words, Goodreads, I, when I downloaded the app, I went to the Google App Store and I clicked on Goodreads and it downloaded and that code is on my phone. When I go to the Goodreads website, all right, that code is out in the cloud. So you could say this lives in the cloud. Now, I'll tell you, this is a little bit of an oversimplification because truth be known, all right, even though the app lives on your device, it might be getting data from the cloud. And 
And even though the mobile website lives in the cloud, each page gets downloaded to your device as you're viewing it. So, it's a good way to put it, but um, um, uh, again, we, we have to remember uh, the full details of it. What's another difference between an app and a mobile website? Apps are a lot easier to use. Okay. Apps, <clears throat> apps are limited in what they do. Apps are limited in what that, they do. I'm trying to think of... I, I use an app for a different reason than I use a mobile website. Okay. Yeah, I, I like that. You use an app for a different reason than using a mobile website. Can you give an example? My husband uses a calorie counter app. Oh, what kind? Calorie counter app. Okay. Um, I don't like the Facebook app. I'd rather use the website app. Okay. Or a website for Facebook. Okay. Just limits. Okay. Yes. Frequency of use. Frequency of use. Uh, is it go on a website so much? summarize all these thoughts. So not every mobile, not every website has an app. Well, that, that's true. Um, let's try to summarize some of these thoughts, because I heard a couple of things um, that I want to sort of summarize into one point. And I will say apps are a curated experience. What does it mean when you say something's curated? You go to a museum and you say that the curator of the museum is, is Marilyn Smith, or the curator of this exhibit is, is Marilyn Smith. What does that mean? What does a curator do? Curator essentially picks out what you're going to see, right? choose what you're going to see, and, and, and generates an experience specifically for you. All right? Now, and this gets into the statement of apps doing less. I was hesitant to write that up there because, in some respects, apps can do less, but in other respects, apps can do a lot more. All right? So I hesitate to say that. Apps can do less. Apps may be intentionally designed to limit their functionality to just the things that you're likely going to do on a mobile phone. Alright? So, let's go back to my Goodreads example. Maybe with this Goodreads app, I just finished a book and I want to just pop on, indicate that I finished it, and gotten a review. Or maybe I'm in a bookstore and I want to flip through and say, what books did I say I wanted to read? And find those. All right. I'm not likely to do like heavy duty browsing on this and spend hours clicking through and all that. There's some specific things I want to do and if the app designer did a good job, they have anticipated the things I want to do and made it real easy for me to do that. In other words, just think in terms of accessing it. First of all, to access the app, what do I have to do? Touch the icon, and there I'm there. All right, wow. To get to their website, what do I have to do? I have to click the browser, then I'm in the wild, wild west of the web, <laughs> right? And I can go to any site. And I, if I'm not careful, can click on an ad or an external link or whatever and end up someplace totally different than I thought. Whereas an app is very focused on what you can do. They limit it. They don't necessarily give you all the functionality that you get through the full-blown website. But that might be okay because it's identified that those are the most critical pieces of functionality for someone accessing this material. Um, 
via mobile device. So that's why I like to use the word curated. In other words, they pull it out from the web. It's not like out the web and, okay, go in and find it. They have gone and they plucked out the stuff that they want you to be able to access via your mobile device and made it an app and made it real simple for you to get and do those two or three different things. Now, what's the downside of this? The downside of this is what if you want to do more? All right. You had mentioned you don't like to use a Facebook app. You'd rather use a Facebook website. Or was it the yes, other way around? I like, the website. I like the website better. Why do you like the website better? So I can access things easier. Because you can do more stuff, right? I mean, there's a, there's a classic uh, dichotomy here between the control. Who has control, the designer or the user? Designer has control, they can make it easy. Here's the three things you can do. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Button for this, button for that, button for that. All right? But you can give simplicity if the designer has control. But you lose the complexity. You lose the ability to go in and do anything that you might want to do on Facebook's website. Sort of my shorthand for saying that is the apps are a curated experience. Someone picks out what they think you're going to want to do. And a good app or not is like, did they do a good job in guessing what you want to do? All right, anticipate, maybe guessing is the wrong word, maybe anticipating what you want to do. If they've done a good job with it, then it's going to be a good app. All right, if they haven't done a good job with it, then you're going to want to be going in and using the full-blown website to get all the stuff that you really do want to do. So that curated experience is a double-edged sword makes the apps simpler to use, again, clicking an icon as opposed to opening a browser and typing in. I don't know about you, but I have a hard time typing on a mobile device, probably because I'm old and my hands are too big, all right? I can click a button real easy, all right? So just something that fundamental. If I want to look up the weather, there's my Weather Channel app, boom. There's pretty much what I want to know 99% of the time with the weather. Yeah, you know, maybe on an infrequent basis, gee, what's it going to be like this weekend? All right, in which case maybe I have to poke around. But most of the time, I want to know, like, gee, what's the temperature going to be? Is it going to rain later? You know, that sort of thing. Other differences between an app and a mobile website. that I would expect that you, you know. Where do you get apps for your iPhone app? The App Store. The, the Apple App Store. Where do you get apps for your Android device? Do you get them from the Apple? No. Right? Why not? Well, an uh, app for Android doesn't work on uh, Apple. And an app for an Apple doesn't work on a uh, an Apple device doesn't work on an Android device. All right. So apps are device specific. That's the kind of thing that makes a software developer cringe, right? Because they don't have to just get it right one time. They have to get it right two times. In other words, if I'm developing an app, let's say my hypothetical sporting goods company wants to develop an app, all right, a mobile app, well, 
If I just come out with an iTunes or, or a, 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 an iPhone app, then all the folks that are running Android, which is a substantial number of people, can't access it. If I just develop a, uh, an, uh, an a, a Android app, everyone that, that has an Apple product can't access it. So, what do I have to do? I have to develop two. And is two even enough? Well, I don't know, right? Because what about BlackBerry users? All right. What about that one person that uses a Windows phone? All right. All those things are things that aren't covered. And what about the you know if someone innovates another mobile operating system? That will muddy the water even further. Web pages, though, websites by design are meant to be device independent. I mean, you think about it, you know, if I have a Windows machine or if I have a Macintosh or if I have a Linux machine, I can open a web browser and go to Google.com and I can type in a search term and I should get back the same results and it should work just about the same way uh, in both platforms. Because the whole idea of the web is the web is based on protocols and protocols are ways of communicating. The web is based on standards, which means that as long as you agree to, to play by certain rules, you can interact on the web. All right? That's not the case with device-specific apps. All right? You can't develop an app that works the exact same way on uh, uh, Apple operating system as well as Android. Now, I mentioned another key word in that discussion, and that was browser. And this muddies the water further still, right? Because as anyone that's done plain old web development knows, there are issues you know, it's all well and good for me to say that the web is device independent. I can run it on Apple. I can run it in Unix. I can blah, 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 blah. In real life, however, each of these devices is going to be running a different web browser. In fact, even on Windows, you can run a variety of different web browsers. On Mac, you can run a variety of different. So these websites live within a browser, and therefore there's potential compatibility issues. Now, the, by the time we're, we're done with this overview, you might be running out the door screaming, saying, forget this. This is just too crazy. This is exactly why it's a valuable skill to have, to be able to parse through all this mess and to figure out the best solution for an organization at a time really takes a lot of skills and to be able to understand this. You know, um, to, 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 to use a cliche, you know, this is why we get the big bucks, right? Because we got a grip on all this stuff, all right? This is clearly not, any of these scenarios is clearly not an ideal scenario, all right? The ideal scenario on paper might be, you might think the ideal scenario on paper is something like, oh, we'll do a mobile website, right? We, you know lives in the cloud, we don't have to install anything, you can access it, it's device independent, I don't have to develop an Android and an Apple version of it, then you're stuck with browser compatibility issues to deal with. All right? You develop an app, you say, okay, well, we'll forget all that, we'll develop an app. And, they, you know, it's sometimes called native applications because they run on a particular software platform. Well, then it's device specific and you have to develop apps for the different devices. There's one last advantage, one more that I can think of anyhow, and we could probably think of some more. Uh, but one other advantage under the app is that because it's device specific, you can take advantage of
takes fuller advantage of the device's capabilities. Because the app is written specifically for the iPhone platform, or specifically for Android, you know, it can do anything on those platforms that, that will allow. A web standard solution, you know, think of it like, the, like, like buying custom clothes with buying something off the rack, right? If you're developing custom for a particular device, you can create an app that fits that device exactly that integrates with the camera, that integrates with email, that integrates with the phone, that integrates with the calendar and contact list and all those things. You can do that because you know what platform it's on. You, you don't have to design for a bunch of different platforms, right? I can develop something for an iPhone and I know the people running it are having this hardware and have these applications. So I can write something that integrates really good, all right? If, however, I'm writing a generic situ uh, uh, a web page, I don't know about the platform they're on. They might be on a Mac, or I keep saying Mac, they might be on an Apple platform, they might be on an Android platform. In which case, I can't customize and take advantages of the things specific to those platforms. So, an app can take fuller advantage of the device capabilities, whereas a mobile website can't take as full of advantage of the device's capabilities. So where does that leave us? All right, That leaves us with having to examine our particular business problem and business situation and see where the advantages and disadvantages lie. All right. Is my application something where I really want to integrate with the features of that? All right? If so, then it probably makes more sense to develop an app. All right? Is there something not particularly device specific about it? Maybe a mobile website would be a better approach. So you have to consider all these things within the context of the particular problem you're trying to solve. Truth be known, you're liable to do a couple of these different things. Uh, we had a guy, did anyone attend the mobile uh, seminar that we had in the end of spring semester? We had a guy from, I forget the name of the company, but they manage uh, service stations for like long distance truckers. And they develop mobile apps for that, but their fallback plan is like, what if someone has a Blackberry? Well, we have a mobile site for those people. So for complete coverage, you know, there's some things that are nice about the device specific versus the application, but they also have a mobile, uh, uh, mobile site uh, to maybe fill in the gaps and all that. This is something that I, I'm not entirely sure that it is completely shaken out. All right? Just like, um, you know, when, uh, you know when, when videotapes were first created, there was beta and VHS, and it took a while for there to be a clear-cut winner in that, you know. Um, and maybe there will never be a clear-cut winner. Maybe there will always be a place for, for each of these. But I don't think this is a question that, that, that the IT world has completely, uh, completely, you know, worked through, all right? The notion of apps versus apps. Muddying the water even further and adding more complexity, complexity is the introduction of HTML5. All right? HTML5 is a new version of HTML which has a lot of great capabilities. All right? Anytime someone says that, the question has to become obviously, well, what the problems are with it? What are the problems? If it's so great, you know, well, the problems again compatibility issues and, and browser issues at this point, all right, with mobile devices. So, again, uh, 